Welcome to Tuesday Talks. We realize that life is hard. We all have questions that we wouldn't even think about asking out loud. The comforting thing is, you're not alone. We're all asking them. That's what this podcast is for. Each week, we're going to talk about hard questions and painful points in life. We won't shy away from anything. If you've thought it, we're going to talk about it so you feel seen and understood. Join us for our conversation this week on Tuesday Talks. What is up, everyone? Thank you for joining us for another episode of Tuesday Talks. Um, this week, got Grant and Kenny back. Um, we're going to get to hang out. Thanks, you guys, for being on. Yeah, thanks for having us. Excited to be here. How, how were y'all's weekends? Were they good? Like, what, what all did you guys get to do? We had a crazy weekend, uh, partially because our camp sign-ups just happened. So we mm-hmm. had a wild, yeah. like, Friday, Saturday with... A lot of emails and phone calls that our team was able to do, and that's true. We had a lot of students to see, so it was a good weekend. Let's yeah, see. yeah. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I was going to look up something, but I'm not going to do it. Kenny, how was your weekend? <laughs> Mine was good. I just had work, and I don't even remember what I did. It, yeah, I don't know what happened this weekend. <laughs> it was a blur. <laughs> yeah, it, every, every week it's it just a blur. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, because Grant brought it up. Uh, we're going to just go ahead and talk about it. We got camp. Camp sign It's happening, alive. y'all. It's happening. Uh, when this releases, which will be tomorrow, because we're recording the day before, um, it will uh, we'll still be an early bird. Uh, oh, yeah. So you guys have till April 10th to sign up. All you need to do is sign up uh, and pay $5 to lock in your spot for the cheapest price that camp has been in a very long time. Yeah. Um, I don't want to sit here and be like, in long, hollow history, but, I mean, it's got to be close. Like, it is a great price um and so long hollow has been able the uh our leaders have just been able to um make it to where it's a really cheap price so sign up camp is going to be awesome um grant and grant and kenny both in one sentence uh explain camp yeah so camp is the opportunity to take your normal schedule and set it aside to encounter god with uh, raw kind of intentionality and intensity that's unlike anything else is how I would describe it. Wow, that was good. That, that was, was good. That was one sentence. Yeah. All right, Kenny, your turn. I just think of like three words. Jesus, community, fun. Boom. Boom. <laughs> yeah, it will be a ton of fun. Yeah. So if you want to go, uh, don't wait to sign up because we're already at half capacity for both camps, for both high school and middle school camp. Yep. Uh, and that's not a flex. That is me saying, like, if you want to go. <laughs> we want you to go. We want you sign to go. Up. Sign up. But if, we can't take you if we don't have room. That's and right. that's just how, that's the reality of how it goes. That's right. Um, so anyways, with that, we will go ahead and get into our topic, um, which is overthinking. Uh, why can't I stop overthinking? Maybe I'm overthinking about camp. I just want to, <laughs> I want to go, but maybe my friends aren't going. If my friends don't go, then I don't want to go. And if I don't go, then do I get to miss Jesus? Like, how does that all work? You know? And so um, overthinking is a wild thing. Um, yeah. I personally do it a lot. Um, and so why can't I stop? I think it's a valid question to ask. Uh, it's a really interesting um, topic within the like mind and the battle of the mind. And so I think you've kind of got to address the like first kind of foundation pieces of the mind for us, I think is one of the greatest battlegrounds that we have on earth. Uh, We talk about it constantly. Most of the like innate kind of basic struggles we have are rooted around the mind. Mm. Uh, And I think overthinking is definitely one of those that attacks this idea that like I can't be safe and secure in my decision, I can't like trust fully. Like there, there's kind of this basic root of, but what if, and if I fail or if it's wrong, then like I'm going to bring consequences on myself. Um, and so I'm excited to get to dive into it today to kind of figure out like, how do we help each other, uh, be able to navigate through decision-making and yeah. us being able to not have to feel like we're just behind the eight ball when it comes to decision-making and the war on our mind. Yeah. And I think that it's, I completely agree with you said with what you said. And it stems from like the very beginning because like, that's how the serpent tempted Eve. Like he like made her question what 
to like her decision and if the Lord had really told them not to eat the fruit. And so since from the very beginning, the enemies continued to attack our minds and our thoughts and make us question everything. That's good. So that means overthinking is a bad thing, right? Because, I mean, it's tiring, but, I mean, I'm just trying to process or I'm just trying to think through. So does that mean it's a like overthinking is bad, right? In my mind, I would say overthinking, it's not as easy as to say it's bad, it's good. I would say that it is bad, but it honestly is just a wrong way of discernment. Like it's, I think there's a better way. Like I think it's the person that wants to make the right decision at the right time without consequences. And I think it's just trying to meet the reality of this world and the reality that you can't make a perfect decision every time. Yeah. Um, but also with the weightiness of, but it does have consequences. So I think if you're, we have to be careful with the fine line between like discerning well and overthinking. So I think overthinking Mm -hmm. is the extreme of discernment and wisdom and decision-making. So yes, I would say that it is bad. Yeah. I say that's an interesting question because it's, yeah, like we can't help it. Like a lot of times I would say that it's normal and natural to overthink So I don't want to be like, what you're doing is bad, but it's unhealthy to feed into it and Mm. to allow yourself to continue to overthink. Gotcha. So if it's not a great thing, then like, what should I do to prevent this or combat this or help myself not overthink? Yeah, I think if you're going to, if you're listening to this and you're sitting there going like, I don't know, maybe I don't, I think most overthinkers know they're overthinkers. Uh, but some may not, but I think it is rooted in like, what is overthinking? How do we understand it? How do we define it? In my mind, I define it through if the small deals are big deals and the big deals are huge deals. And it seems like even the smallest decision, nobody has to say anything, but it turns into this large deal. Mm -hmm. But even like big life decisions become this humongous deal. And nobody said anything of details. It's just within your own mind. It's kind of taken weight and it's, been heightened in value and what could happen, what's going to happen, what the results are. That's where I think you begin to step into overthinking as a whole, as well as like it's indecisiveness that's also met with overwhelming. Like it's not just oh, people that overthink are just really good decision makers. It's that they actually were really indecisive mm-hmm. and it results in overwhelming and stress and it almost kind of paralyzes you from making the decision. Mm. Um, so for me, it's what, how do I work through not just waiting? I think that's what a lot of times whenever we're we're trying to work through overthinking is that we just wait. Uh, We think somebody else will make the decision. We think something else will change. We wait till the last minute because we're like, maybe something might happen. Um, And we're not necessarily actively discerning. We're just kind of sitting and waiting to see if we can get the most context, the most ideas or we run to other people and we're like, hey, can you make this decision for me? Like, yeah. hey, I'm, I'm tired of thinking about it. We're like, will you just make th- I've done that. Like, will you just make this decision for me? I am tired of thinking about it, uh, which I shouldn't have. <laughs> I trust a lot of people in my life, but they should not be making every big life decision for me. Um, so just as we're trying to navigate through this conversation, I think touching on that and trying to figure out where you are in this process and if that's you or not is crucial. Yeah. Yeah. I would say along with that, like if in terms of overthinking about the future or decisions that you're making, like you're talking about, I, at least in my experience, I have to like center myself on reality and like, what is the reality of the situation? What do I find to be true here? Um, And knowing the character of God, every time that I get like more caught up in like what is the decision that I'm going to make or what is going to happen? Like if I make this decision, then all these other things might happen or will play out. And that really stresses me out. And so Mm -hmm. I have to remember like God is sovereign. Like he, I can't mess up his plan. So like if I happen to like make the wrong decision or whatever that may be, um, I have to know that he is ultimately in control and I can't mess up his plan for my life. Um, And if I'm just trying to be wise and make the best decision, like that's all the Lord is asking of me. Um, yeah, but then uh, there's other situations too. Like, I don't know about whoever you are that's listening. If you overthink about situations like that, where it's decisions or whatever, or if you're overthinking about people's ideas of you or like Mm. how, um, I don't, I, I overthink about 
how people view me a lot. And so in terms of like that, I have to center myself on the truth of who the Lord says that I am or who is God and why does his opinion matter of me more than those people's, even if the things that I may be overthinking about are true, if that makes sense. Like even if I'm overthinking that people view me wrongly, I have to realize that even if they do view me in a bad light and I'm being obedient to the Lord, then that has to like, I have to be okay with that. Yeah, I think and that's that a sense. great <laughs> like example. That makes total sense. I've never really thought about overthinking, not just to make a decision. You could make a decision really easy and still be an overthinker. Yeah. Uh, because if you make the decision and then your mind goes, but what is she going to think? What is he going to think about me? Well, what does this result in? Like, the, that's where the overthinking could come. And that's what I'm hearing you say. And I've not really yeah. thought about, you could be sitting there in a great and easy, you'd be like, decisions are super easy for me. It's when I make a decision that then I go, well, what is she going to think about mm-hmm. me? Now that I've made this decision, now that I've said yes, said no. Um, and that's something that I think is definitely prevalent and something that I resonate with. So that makes total sense. I've just never thought about the overthinking can actually happen after the decision as well. Yeah. So let's say I'll use a, my personal example of I tend to overthink my clothes a lot. Okay. Like if I don't decide the night before what I'm yeah. wearing, it's a whole ordeal. Um, which sounds dumb, but it just goes into kind of what you're talking about, Kenny, of, uh, I want to like make sure really it comes down to, have I worn this already? Mm -hmm. Cause I, we're just at that point in the year where I feel like I'm wearing the same thing every single day. Um, and so, but anyways, I'm, I'm put on my clothes, I'm at work and, or I'm at school and I'm trying to, uh, get through the day and I see people looking at me and I'm overthinking and I'm stuck in this of like, oh my goodness, I should have gone with this. Or I should have done, should have worn this instead. Or, or um, you know, maybe I should have done my hair this way or something like that. Um, so I'm, I'm in it. How do I get out of it? How do I stop this cycle that I'm now finding myself in of like, all right, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. And then I look over and Susie's looking at me and I'm like, okay, crap. Like, um, I I messed up. I should have worn something else. And I start the cycle all over again. So how do I get out of that funk? Wow. I totally resonate with those feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, I, oh, and sometimes it happens and it feels like you really can't get out. Like it won't stop, but I've had to learn to like, we talk about taking our thoughts captive, but it's, it's a real thing. You can do it. And I just have to like understand what is it like that I'm believing that these people are thinking or saying about me. And again, like I was just saying, like whether that is true or it is not like, what does the Lord think about me or what does this have? Does this have value eternally? Like mm-hmm. if, if it's your clothes or um, how people may be talking about you, like in that moment, is that something that is like affecting eternity? Is that something that has like kingdom value? And that's not to say that it doesn't like affect you there and now and that that's not valid because it totally is. But um, I think as a believer, we have to like set our minds more on the things above like scripture says and not on the things that are like that are going on in this like worldly setting with like physical things. Yeah, that I think that's sense. a really yeah great way to describe it. I would say like Psalm 4610 is a passage of scripture that I think a lot of people quote and we know a lot of, but we don't realize what it's actually saying. The CSB came out with a new translation for it that I think is really cool to hear uh, for me personally. And I think for this like conversation is that most people know it as be still and know I am God. Mm -hmm. The CSB translated translates it as stop fighting and know I am God. I like that a lot. Um, And I love that. And Mm -hmm. it's more, because the word that's being used is more from a militaristic term. It's not like a Mm -hmm. be still and be passive. It's a stop fighting and rest in the fact that I am God. And so trying to navigate through this, when you're in that moment, it's honestly at that moment, it's not hopeless. You're not stuck forever. But that is one of the hardest moments to then start training your mind, right? Like you're in the middle of it at that point. So trying to figure out ways that you are able to remind yourself of truth that you've trained your mind on prior or after, but you being able to go, how do I train my mind before I get to that moment, before I'm specifically focused on what somebody else is viewing of me or this big life decision is there? How about we try to figure out how do I build trust with God in a way to where I've given him all control. Cause I, I think a lot of overthinking is rooted in some form of control. Mm-hmm. I think we want to yeah. have control. We mm-hmm. want to have control of what people think and what people say, and we just don't. And when we sit in that weight of, 
man, I just don't know how this is going to play itself out. It's the realization that we don't have control. Um, and so you being able to sit in that moment of going, I don't have control, but I know the one that does. Yeah. Mm. Like this internal battle and fight that's happening right now, I can trust that God is truly God. And I don't have to fight figuring out whether or not this person thinks something of me or this decision is going to result in a life altering moment. Like I'm going to trust that God's got that taken care of. And it's that reminder in the moment that honestly is the biggest thing. And having people in your life willing to speak into it to yeah. affirm, because you know, like it's hard coming up to somebody in that moment and going, hey, I'm really overthinking right now. You honestly don't normally see it, but having people in your life, trusted community people to go, hey, I want to remind you, like this is not the weight of the world in this decision. Like yeah. it is truly not what you think. And is going to be as big as you may think that it will be. Mm-hmm. And I know growing up in high school, middle school, I had really bad acne. And so I would literally overthink constantly of like, man, that one pimple was going to be the thing that everybody stared at in every conversation. Cause every time I stared at a mirror, that was the only yeah. thing I saw. And so when we have to try to figure out how to switch our perspective from, I only see blemishes. I only see wrong. I only see what ifs to, the way God sees us, that takes time. That's a long Mm -hmm. game. That's not going to be fixed tomorrow. That's us being able to take steps towards shifting our perspective a little bit more. Yeah, Yeah. that's good. Um, So I'm I'm hearing what you're saying, and it all sounds great in theory, but how do I practically go about this? Like I heard you, Grant, saying training your mind. Kenny, I heard you saying like evaluate, things like this, but in the moment that's really difficult, uh, so like, what, what do you guys do when you get in those moments? Like, what does that look like in a practical sense? Because I feel hopeless in the thought of like, just going, ah, this isn't eternal. Yeah, yeah. That's like saying, you know, Hey, if you're scared, don't be, it's like, yeah, yeah. way yeah. easier than, yeah. Yeah. you know? So w- what do y'all practically do to in the moment and then maybe before the moment? Yeah. I like how you, Grant said that, um, like training before the moment even happens where you're overthinking. Um, we were talking in live group last night and saying like, I, how do I like not think bad things? How do I just think good things? Um, cause you can't just, just not, not think bad things. Um, so I think it has to do with like, what are we feeding ourselves? Mm-hmm. Cause we're going to think about something or we're going to overthink about something, but what is that going to be? Um, and so are you feeding yourself like more scripture than, TV? Are you like praying more than, I don't know, you're talking to your friends or on social media and maybe that sounds cheesy to just like read your Bible a bunch because, and I'm not saying that if you just read your Bible, you're not going to overthink, but if you're filling your thoughts more with like God's word and not Mm -hmm. like your own words and thoughts that are consuming you, then I've at least seen it be more helpful in my own life because I can at least immediately have a verse that pops into my head that I can go to, to remind myself of why I don't have to overthink about a situation that I am overthinking about. Um, I don't know. I would say that I have to, in that moment, fight not getting all the options first Mm. before I know what actually is like the why behind what I'm trying to accomplish. Like what's the goal? Yeah. Uh, in being that I always think about, and I use this example a lot of that, I would bet pretty much everybody listening to this podcast, whether you would say that I'm an overthinker or not, you've probably overthought. And here's the example <laughs> I give is that when you get in the car with a bunch of friends and you're trying to figure out where you're going to go eat and a restaurant you're going to pick, we all overthink. We've all had that moment where mm-hmm. a thousand options are given out. We don't know what we want. We don't know what, like nothing sounds good anymore. Yeah. Like we can't figure out one or the other. Everyone's like, trying not to pick Chick-fil-A. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Like or, we're, or Casa. It's correct. like these are the two things we always eat. Exactly. And so we're like, where do we go? What do we do? This person wants that. I don't want her to think negatively of me because I'm about to say something she didn't say. Like, And yeah. so usually in that moment, and that's a very like, surface level moment Mm -hmm. to kind of then dive into how do we kind of not go we live in the most options culture that we've ever been google you could literally google a thousand different ideas in one moment and go here are all the (laughs) options like you could have a million options of something like places you can go things you can do colleges you can attend and so for you to be able to look at it right now and go okay how do i in this moment not go what are all my options how do i ask the first question of like where is my heart 
Hmm. What it, where is like my mind? What has God said in like his word? I think, Kenny, that's such a good note to make of what we're intaking is going to be crucial for the pregame to then get in yeah. that moment and go, okay, how do I intake well, practice well, train well, to then get in the game and go, all right, now I'm ready. Like I can remind myself I've got to execute something. So I yeah. agree. It's got to be yeah. practical. So I usually ask myself and my mind internally questions because I can't really expect anybody else to know what's going on in my mind in that moment. So for me to go, okay, like not don't go what are my options go what is my why like what is the what is the overall goal of what I'm trying to do so if it's I want to eat I want to eat something that's going to make me feel good that's going to change what I choose like I want to I want to pick something that's going to actually benefit all of these people sometimes it's just hey we have a lot of people like in this moment my why is just like I want to go enjoy time with these people I don't care what food we have so that changes then mm-hmm. the options I give and the things that I care about but if you go what are my options then we can just give our loyalty to whatever, however, whenever. We don't even know what we're trying to accomplish. We're just talking about and thinking about all the different options that are going through our heads of yeah. what's best. And so in my mind, I would always ask, like, what what's the goal? What am I trying to do? And then in the, like, bigger decisions of my life, like, and I'm trying to figure out, like, what are the people around me saying? Like, my community, what are they speaking into my life? What are they affirming? Yeah. And then how am I allowed to, like, then give the Lord permission to just go, God, I trust you. Like, I trust you with whatever is going to happen, and if I need you to give me Holy Spirit conviction if this is not the decision I need to make, or I need you to give me Holy Spirit affirmation of this is the decision I need to make, and if you're just telling me to choose and you want me to trust you, then it'll stay in that moment. I truly believe you'll just, you'll stay right where you are, because I think God does look at us sometimes and go, hey, I need you to choose. Mm -hmm. I need you to pick. Like, you're overthinking because you want control and you're worried about comparison, but I just, I want you to choose. Yeah. Because both of these things are going to result in my glory. Yeah. So. yeah. That's good. You guys have anything else you want to share? Any other closing thoughts? I, I just, th- this verse just popped in my head because it's been sticking out to me a lot lately. But Proverbs 3 says, like, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And so that made, what you just said made me think of that. But um, I even had to pray, like, along with that verse, like, Lord, help me to trust you because that's such a great verse. But to actually trust you of, mm. with all these things is really hard. And I still like am continuing to learn what does it actually look like to trust the Lord with these things that I overthink with. And so I would say pray like a lot. I'm yeah. having to pray so much that the Lord would just help me to trust him and help me to not overthink and that he would help me to um, take my thoughts captive and control my mind and that, that I wouldn't just, I don't know, overthink all the time and not trust him. So yeah. I can't do that on my own. I would add to that of saying that I just give yourself grace. Yeah. If you're sitting here in a moment and you're like, I'm overthinking everything. I think in those moments, if there was one thing I could communicate to your mind, it would be that like grace is getting what you do not deserve. God has given you mm-hmm. everything you need. Like mm-hmm. everything truly will be well. Like yeah. if you trust the Lord and you believe the Lord is true and good and he is saying exactly what he's, he's meaning, exactly what he's saying then you can trust him to go, this decision doesn't alter my entire life. And so to be able to give yourself grace of, if I choose wrong, I learn. If I choose right, I learn. Like, yeah. this is okay. If I'm trusting the Lord and having faith in him and being wise, then you being able to make a decision, just allowing the overthinkers out there to give <laughs> themselves grace mm. and a lot of prayer of what Kenny said, I think would be amazing. Two yeah. things to end on. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Thank you both for being on. Um, this was awesome. And uh, y'all y'all had a lot, and that was great. So um, <laughs> this was actually a question that was sent in. Um, it was th- That question had a lot, and this was one of the things. And so it's just really cool. Uh, one, that you guys are sending in questions. Yeah. Um, that means a lot to, to us sure. because it means you're listening and that you want to engage, and we love that. Um, so please keep sending your questions in because we're yeah. going to keep answering them. Um, we're going to answer them as quickly as we can. Um, and, uh, as well as we can, we don't want to give you guys, um, half-hearted answers or anything like that. We want to make sure that we've thought through and, uh, we tackle these questions that you have the best that we can. So if you have a question, text Tuesday to 98173 and you'll get a link where you get to, uh, you get to fill it out and, uh, you can put your name on it or no, you won't put your name on it. That's the whole point. You don't put your name on it. Let me be clear. Your name is not on the question. It is anonymous. Uh, it is anonymous. Uh, so um, send it in and we will get it answered as quickly as we can. So thank you guys for listening and we'll catch you next week. See ya.